This video covers the topics of implicit bias and racial health disparities in maternal health, as guided by the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice teaching framework. The 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice is a teaching framework to promote health equity and racial justice in medical education. The framework relies on a five-step approach that discusses the learning and clinical context, the current standard around a medical diagnostic or treatment, the historical roots and bias of that standard, contributions to health disparities, and steps to take to practice more equitably. This framework offers educators a structured way to talk about this topic in a concise manner across commonly encountered clinical scenarios. By the end of this presentation, you will be able to describe maternal health disparities experienced by Black mothers compared to mothers from other races, and recognize how structural racism and implicit bias contribute to racial health disparities in maternal morbidity and mortality. A 32-year-old Black female who is 30 weeks pregnant presents to the OB clinic for a third trimester visit. This is her first pregnancy and first visit with her doctor during her pregnancy because she has had difficulty establishing care. She states that she thinks everything is going well. She has had healthy weight gain until the past two weeks. She noticed her weight gain has accelerated and reports shortness of breath and leg swelling that has limited her physical activities. She tells the learner physician that something just doesn't feel right. The learner physician evaluates her and tells her, Weight gain and swelling can be normal in late pregnancy. Try to elevate your legs and come back for your follow-up in two weeks. This is a common scenario. How are structural racism and implicit bias affecting patient care here? These conversations are tough to have. Let's watch how two clinicians navigate this discussion. This is a good opportunity for us to talk about how pregnancy-associated complications and mortality differ across races and what we can do as providers to reduce these disparities. Has anybody ever talked with you about this before? This was never taught to me during my training, but it's important for us to be aware so that we can practice as equitably as possible. Let's spend a few minutes talking about this. I would love to hear your thoughts as well. The United States has the highest maternal mortality rate among developed countries, and this rate has doubled over the past 20 years. Approximately 700 women die in the U.S. each year from pregnancy-related complications. The majority of these cases are felt to be preventable. The most common causes for pregnancy-related deaths are due to heart failure, pulmonary embolism, hypertension, and hemorrhage. I didn't realize that the pregnancy-associated death rates were increasing. Is this true for all our patients across the board? There are significant racial disparities. Black, American Indian, or Alaska Native women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications when compared to their white counterparts. Death rates are also higher for some Asian and Latina mothers. Yes, I've heard about the disparities in care that Black mothers experience when they seek medical attention. This was seen in the case of international tennis champion Serena Williams. Serena Williams has a history of pulmonary embolisms. In 2017, after the delivery of her first child by C-section, she developed shortness of breath and chest pain. Given her previous PE, she requested a CT scan of her lungs to evaluate for a new PE. But instead, she was told by her medical team that her pain medications were making her confused. She then developed severe coughing, which led to rupture of her stitches and a large hematoma that required surgery. Her physician eventually ordered a CT scan of her lungs, which confirmed the diagnosis of multiple new PEs. Wow. This story makes me consider how even her reputation, social and economic capital didn't protect her against doubt and implicit bias demonstrated by her medical team. We don't know the exact details of what happened in Serena Williams' case. But the reality is that pregnancy-associated morbidity and mortality is disproportionately a problem that women of color face, even after adjusting for socioeconomic factors. College-educated Black mothers are five times more likely to die from pregnancy-related complications than college-educated white women, and still 1.6 times more likely to die than white women who have less than a high school education. Why is there such a huge gap even after adjusting for these factors? 
The reasons for these racial disparities is multifactorial, but includes limited access to healthcare services, including prenatal care and postpartum care, due to geographical barriers, lack of health insurance, and inadequate healthcare facilities in marginalized communities. Almost half of the births in the United States are paid for by Medicaid, which covers low-income and vulnerable populations. Previously, Medicaid covered peripartum care up to 60 days after delivery. But many problems can come up after this time frame. Postpartum depression and psychosis, wound healing issues, and hypertension. The Affordable Care Act expanded healthcare access for postpartum care to go up to 12 months in some states. But there are still a dozen states without Medicaid expansion. This results in families facing challenges in getting health care coverage for themselves and their new children. Their income may be too high to meet traditional Medicaid income thresholds, but they may also lack sufficient income to pay for coverage out of pocket. These burdens fall hardest on low-income families of color. Most of the states that fail to expand Medicaid are in the South, where approximately 50% of Black Americans live. Studies have shown that states with Medicaid expansion have a 7% reduction in maternal mortality compared to states without Medicaid expansion. Why was the reduction in maternal mortality in states that have expanded Medicaid still so small? Wouldn't addressing this social determinant of health be expected to level the field more? Social determinants of health don't fully explain the higher rates of maternal morbidity and death in racial and ethnic minority mothers. Implicit racial bias from healthcare providers affects how women receive care. Discrimination and stereotypes held by providers can result in suboptimal care, misdiagnosis, or even dismissal of Black women's pain and concerns, leading to delayed or inadequate treatment. That's disheartening, but also an opportunity for us to do better. What can we do as individual providers? Because maternal health disparities are the effect of multiple layers of bias and racism, a multi-pronged approach is needed. As individual providers, we can promote health equity by identifying our own unconscious biases through unconscious bias training or by taking the implicit bias test. Recognizing that there are increased risks for maternal morbidity and mortality in Black, African American, Native American, and Latina patient populations, and advocate for closer follow-up in vulnerable populations. Also consider how social determinants of health, such as access to care, transportation, food, racial identity, and income inequity affect your patient's ability to stay healthy and factor those things in into your follow-up and treatment recommendations. So bring this back to our patient today. What do you want to do instead? Well, what I learned was Black, American Indian, and Alaska Native mothers experienced the highest rates of pregnancy-related complications. Even after adjusting for income and college education level, Black mothers have higher pregnancy-related mortality rates compared to white mothers. Structural factors such as limited access to health and implicit bias contribute to these maternal health disparities. I think we should go back and clarify with this patient why it's been so hard for her to receive peripartum care and get a better history on the symptoms that worry her and see if we need to do more of a workup. I agree. Let's go see her together. To learn more about the 5-Minute Moment for Racial Justice and other health equity resources, visit 5 mm Racial Justice that's stanford.edu.